to the Raiders Report presented by Credit One. I'm Erin Coscarelli. This is my good friend, defensive back, Eric <laughs> Allen. It is good to see you. You like the new tunes we've got I, going I on? I do. Yeah, I you dancing doing over there. thing back there. Yeah, yeah. How you doing? I'm doing pretty good. Yeah. Got my family doing well, got my good. friends, and good. got football. Hey. So it's all good. It's good to be back, I will tell you that. Now, of course, before talking 2021, now that we've had some time away yeah. from the season, we need to get EA's assessment of 2020. Well, let's put it to bed. You know, uh, I think, first of all, the good. Uh, offensively, uh, when you start to look at this offense and the pieces, there were some explosive plays, things that were going very well. I thought Derek Carr played at an all-pro, Pro Bowl level this year. I think offensive line, the versatility we showed all year long, Nelson Aguilar making big plays. Then the bad, defensively, just inconsistent. You know, I just you, you can't have that if you want a championship caliber football team. That's going to get better. But I'm excited going forward 2021. Yeah, and of course, I mean, this year was a unique year having to deal with a lot of challenges and lots to build on. <laughs> lots right. of good things to build on. Speaking of that, let's move the ball forward. Let's talk about 2021 season. It is time for Eric's cover three, your top yes. three topics that you think should be a priority heading into the season. Right, for sure. Number one here, Eric's cover three. We've got Bradley brings in an outstanding defensive staff, a new defense, an approach to how the Raiders are going to play football here. He has some also some outstanding assistant coaches who have spent a mm. ton of time in the National Football League, and they're going to get it done. So that's number one. Free agency frenzy. I mean, we talk about free agency. There's a lot of them, but again, you got to talk about specific fits to your offensive or defensive unit, and then we talk production. You know, most of the time, they're talking about, hey, how many catches does the guy have? How many interceptions? But if he doesn't fit your system, he may not be a very good fit for your football team. So that's an important issue right there. We're going to go system fit, then production, and then the rookie class from last year. Let's give them a pass, right? Let's give them a pass. They had COVID. They had injuries. So I'm really hoping that this year, the 2020 class with the practice, with the on-field, hopefully with the practices, they have an opportunity to be an explosive 2021 from the 2020 class. Yeah, and I like that you use the word explosive EA because yeah. imagine if your introduction to the NFL was the 2020 season. Right. I mean, it's boot camp. You'd be ready for anything. You're yeah. ready to adapt when you need to, right? Right, because the we all know that offensively, Gruden's playbook is like, you know, five yeah. uh, dictionaries. <laughs> so it takes time, particularly for sure. the receivers. So we're expecting explosive plays from receivers in the rest of that 2020 class. I'm excited. The future is certainly bright for the Las Vegas Raiders. Well, you saw it, number one. Lots of storylines to talk about for the Raiders. But first, the arrival of Gus Bradley. EA sat down. His interview is coming up next. Brought to you by Credit One Bank, the official credit card of the Raiders. Cox, proud partner of the Las Vegas Raiders. Welcome back to the Raiders Report. You caught up with Coach Gus Bradley, his introduction here into the Las Vegas Raiders. What was your uh, initial impression of meeting Coach? Um, just, just a great teacher mm -hmm. development, I think, is really essential when you're talking about Gus and how he wants to implement his defense. I mean, just being able to develop these guys to understand not just the defense, but how the defense is going to be attacked. That's the most important issue we have here, because if you understand how you're going to be attacked, you can really get a heads up on mm -hmm. that and mm -hmm. really prepare for that and be ready for all those adjustments. Yeah, and it helps, of course. This is a man that is very familiar with the AFC West. Yeah. I am so excited yeah. for Eric's interview with Coach Gus Bradley, brought to you by Twitch. Have a look. Gus Bradley, yeah. man, new defensive coordinator, Las Vegas Raiders. I know. Huh? I, you it like sounds it. good so yeah, far, right? Good, it right. sounds good. So, <laughs> no, it's an exciting time. I mean, to be with a lot of the people that you know, Coach Gruden and then a lot of members of the staff, and then they able to bring some of our staff members that were uh, affiliated with us with the Chargers. So it's been a, an easier transition. I guess it's never easy, but uh, you know, it's going to come quick now once we get to April. Yeah, for sure. I know you just came from a new building over in uh, Carson. 
worse in California, but how about this here? Yeah, it's unbelievable. I mean, we were talking prior to this meeting, you know, just the facility, I mean, an indoor like this, but it's that and then some, yeah. you know, another half of a field and the width of the field. And really the whole facility is like that from the dining center to our offices, meeting rooms, everything was done first class. First class, right? Yeah. We know a lot of the same people. Monty Kiffin, he was yeah. my coordinator in uh, New Orleans for a while. JL, Jim Mora, of yeah. course, Peter Genta, who I love. Uh, talk just a little bit about philosophy, how those guys impacted you, right. and uh, what, what you think about when you talk about Gus philosophy. Sure. Well, I think, you know, a lot, my, most of my time in the beginning stage of my career was in college. So 18, 19 years in college, and then was fortunate to get the call to come to Tampa Bay with John Gruden and, and Monty Kiffin. And I think, you know, you have some ideas, some philosophy in college, but I think Coach Kiffin really helped bring it together. And he's been such a big, important part of my life and our family's life, a big impact on it. So uh, he helped tremendously, uh, you know, with my philosophy and our philosophy, I should say. And then going on to Seattle with Jim Mora, you know, who another uh, great man for me and, you know, a great learning experience. And then Pete Carroll, yeah. you know, so been very fortunate to be around some very impactful coaches. Foundation wise, if I was to say, if someone were going to put something behind your name as far as coverage and foundation, what would you say? Right. I, I'm sure it would come back. To, I mean, obviously, Monty Kiffin, when he was at Tampa, it was the Tampa 2. Yeah. You know, yeah. play it over and over again, but get so good at it, you know, believing that it was a precision league, the NFL. So I think that carried over a lot to when we went to Seattle. Okay. And, uh, you know, Pete Carroll was not a big cover two man. Right, he wanted right. to play more aggressively on the perimeter with corners. But the same principles as far as fundamentals, technique, execution, there's, you know, those are non-negotiables in our system. And again, when you're talking about development, you're talking about uh, transitioning players to certain positions. But when you talk about development, and we hear that you're a great teacher of the game, right? You have these great stories. How does that help you develop a young team like this Raiders uh, defense becoming, you know, taking that next step? Sure. I, I think um, the NFL is really a race to maturity. You know, the owners, the, the coaches, the head coach, the fans, they want these first and second year players to act like six, seven, eight year veterans. Yeah. So it's that race to maturity. How can we get these guys to mature and play like they're capable of playing and yet have that experience, that wisdom that goes along with it? So, you know, I think it's really a system that they can come in and learn quickly so they can really put their emphasis on the fundamentals and techniques. So that part of it, I think that consistently when they come in the building, they know what they're getting as a coaching staff, you know, not only on the field, but off the field yeah. as well. Finally, for me, at the end of the season, uh, you're going through what a success from a defensive unit look like for you? Well, no one wants to hear that, hey, we just want to get better, right? <laughs> Especially here with the Raiders. I don't know if that would go over very well. <laughs> but, uh, you know, we all know what we're after, right? I mean, we all have that, that vision of what we're all shooting for, and we really got our vision on it. And we're not going to deny that. I mean, that's very important to us. It's very important to our fans in this organization. So we hold that really true to our heart, and we know that's the big picture that we're going after. It. But I think it's also so what does it take to get to that point? And as you know, as a player, that that is so important each day, you know, to really get everything you can. And hopefully it's a team that when we're all done, you know, that it is a fast physical team that gets the ball out, that's aggressive on the perimeters, you know, that type of mindset, that's an effort-based defense. Yeah. You know, and I think if that's when someone comes into our building, our you know, stadium, and that's the way they're talking about us, uh -huh. then you know we're, we're starting to head in the right direction. All right, congratulations, man, great talk. Appreciate it. Thank right. you. This has been brought to you by Twitch. Watch, discover, join in. On June 5th, 2001, one of the most prolific wide receivers in NFL history became an Oakland Raider. Jerry, when you saw yourself in silver and black for the first time, what went through your head? Yeah, I look good in it, man. <laughs> Third down and short. Gannon to throw, and he's going for Rice wide open. Touchdown! Even a 39-year-old can run by it if the 39-year-old is wearing number 80. I'm very fortunate to still go out there with the intensity and, and still can be productive. In 2002, Rice added his 13th Pro Bowl to his resume and overall helped the Raiders earn two playoff berths. An AFC title 
in an appearance in Super Bowl 37. Back to the show, Jerry Rice is a prime example how important <laughs> free agency can be to your team. A lot of people, 39 years old, thought maybe he didn't yeah. have anything left in the tank, and that wasn't so true because he right. had a lot in the tank. Uh, he sure did. Man of little words, but huge actions. I, I think when you talk about Jerry, we all know his performance on the football field, but when he came to the Raiders and I was there, uh, it just his impact over the entire roster on both sides of the ball. I remember taking extra one-on-ones with him after after practice was over so he can sharpen his skills he would call me out you know in the middle of practice you know so again he really affected the whole team and that's what you want a free agent to be able to do I understand about the production but it's more than that it's sure. how you affect the football team the locker room the young guys Jerry was a perfect example mm. of what an all pro free agent is all about he was all about raising the collective vibe That's of right. that locker room, impacted the field and off the field. So let's talk free agent, and yeah. here's a list of our potential Raiders free agents. EA, I ask you, who do you think uh, stands out to you on this Yeah, list? and again, the list is long, right? Sure. And again, we're going to focus on defense first. And I, I love Nicholas Morrow, his versatility, what he was able to bring each and every game. He played the Sam, the Will, the Nickel, the Mike. He played a little bit of everything. Defensive tackle Jonathan Hankins also provided a spark, can play both tackles, really had a great energy about him. So again, that's the one guy you want to try and target. Offensively, Denzel Good, again, guard tackle. We talk about versatility, right? And all these guys, these are the kind of guys you want to try and resign. Last but not least, and please guys, uh, Nelson Aguilar, I mean, fantastic uh, acquisition by the Raiders, came out of Philadelphia. We didn't know where he was going to be. It's going to be a, the third receiver or the fourth receiver. Remember, we had Tyrell Williams. We had these two young players that we're going to get. And he exploded onto the scene. I mean, from day one. And again, just like Jerry was an example in the locker room, his leadership. You look at all the numbers right there, and no one thought he could do this. He was the premier receiver for the Raiders this year, making big play after big play in the locker room, in the ear of the young players. I mean, outstanding free agent guy. And if we're talking about receivers, this is a guy you want to target. He balled out, and immediately you saw the chemistry between him and Derek Carr. Yes. where he was that guy that was counted on the vertical threat that the Raiders needed when Brian Edwards had injuries, Henry yeah. Ruggs had injuries, and the eight touchdowns you saw were second <laughs> most in terms of touchdown receptions for the team. So those are the names. EA, what do you think the positions that the Raiders should key in on and focus on during the offseason? Well, I hear Raider Nation right now, and they're saying, sacks, <laughs> sacks, sacks, right? Defensive end, get somebody who can... But you know what? Those guys don't just grow on trees. No one's giving those guys away, Aaron. You know, so you're not going to get that guy. You may have to go into the draft. But what I like is I like an interception guy, a guy who's a ball hawk, someone can get his hands on the ball to help that secondary really elevate those interceptions, elevate the opportunities that these guys will get when that ball is in the air, someone who can come and snatch that ball out of the air. I think that is essential for free agents as far as helping this defense take that next step, give the ball back to the offense mm -hmm. so they have more possessions, they can get that short field at times, and sometimes you want to get the interception and go to the house, pick take it six. to the house. That's what it's all about, really. I think that's important for this team to get to that next level defensively is to get someone back there who's a ball hawk who can help Jonathan. Someone that, like you said, could steer the ship for the younger guys, yes. like you mentioned, for right. sure. All right, well, that's what free agency could possibly look like this offseason. Coming up next for you folks at home here on the Raiders Report, what's trending mm -hmm. in Raider Nation? A lot is going on around the league for quarterbacks. Uh -oh. What could that possibly mean for the Raiders? We got it all for you coming up next. Stick around. Welcome back to the Raiders Report presented by Credit One here inside our Intermountain Healthcare facility. Aaron Coscarelli, that is Eric Allen back with you. It is time, EA, for what's trending right. in Raider Nation. What are the people saying about the silver and black? We've got you the very latest. And of course, EA, the number one topic in the NFL has been everywhere. The QB carousel, <laughs> literally everywhere. A lot of movement at the quarterback position. EA, I want to get your take on this. Probably different than your time when you were playing. A lot of players 
demanding trades. Yeah. You're seeing a lot of player empowerment. What is your take on that? Well, again, I think this had to do with Tom Brady effect. And mm. Tom left New England, went to Tampa, and it looked really easy. It's not that <laughs> easy, guys. Uh, he was surrounded by a great staff, and guys were letting him do what he needed mm -hmm. to do. And a lot of quarterbacks now are saying, you know what? I don't feel comfortable in this situation. Um, at the end of my career, I want to go out with a splash. And so you get Jarrett going to Detroit and Matthew Stafford going to L.A. L.A. seems like they're the kind of club right now that's like, you know what? We're not going to ever rebuild. We're just going to reload, reload, reload. we got these two outstanding defensive players and Aaron Donald, Jen Ramsey. We're going to add this quarterback to hope to get to the point where we can rely on the quarterback position to win ball games. And I think going forward, some of these teams feel that way. And you know, you have Deshaun not feeling comfortable and appreciated in Houston, same thing in Seattle. So again, it's about the relationship you're trying to build as a quarterback, as the face of your franchise, trying to get to that next level mm -hmm. and have everything kind of work, but it's not that easy. One thing it does tell you when you talk about relationships, how important it is between the quarterback and the coach, and it's going to make you feel good that yeah. at least you know Derek Carr and oh. John Gruden have a pretty strong relationship. Yeah, and we know Raider Nation always thinks about this, but it, it goes to show you that the relationship between uh, Carr and Coach Gruden are solid. It's mm -hmm. solid. He really appreciates what Carr can do when you look at all the numbers. I mean, he's one of the top, you know, 12, 13 quarterbacks in the National Football League, and he really understands, and because it's a process going through uh, being a quarterback with Coach Gruden. He's very difficult, very hard, very demanding on quarterbacks, and Carr has really stepped up, and he has really garnered the respect of not just John, but everyone in this organization, and he continues to play at a very high level. And he continues to improve under Coach Gruden's system. You right. see year after year, his numbers continue to uh, get better and better, and they're surrounding him with better talent. Um, okay, but then I have to ask you this question. Why yeah. every Every single time during this year, Derek Carr's name comes up with speculation. Why? Well, well, again, that's a good thing, actually, and a bad thing. Good first is they know what kind of quarterback he is. And I think all the Raider fans out there understand in the duress, he's been making big time plays. Just go back to that Jet game, uh, you know, that oh, yeah. last second, you know, we think we're going to lose, and he comes up with a big play down the field. So he's continually getting better, stretching the field. We saw him use his legs. So other general managers and head coaches and offensive quarterback coaches see that. They see the production, they see the potential of this young man. On the bad side, and why people are calling is because at the end of the season, he's not in the playoffs. And the team is not really getting to the potential that we should get. So they start to assume, hey, maybe he's unhappy. Mm. But they don't know Derek. Derek lives and breathes for this organization. He wants to really get this team to the point where we're every season, playoff bound, Super Bowls, those kind of things. So, again, the good is Derek is good. And the That's bad it, is yeah. at the end of the season, we're not where we're supposed to be yet. Yeah. And That's we it. understand that. Well, speaking of Derek Carr, priority number one is to protect the man. And when you think about protection, you think about Trent Brown, of course, Ooh, right? Yes. Uh, grown man, <laughs> grown man. Only started, though, in five games right. this season. So how important is he, EA, to this offense? Oh, man. I, I, we could say when we saw the Kansas City game, <laughs> we saw me just running right behind him and just open up holes, doing an outstanding job. But the most important thing, Aaron, we all say this, is availability. Mm. He has to be available. Available so we can see him, so we can continue to really, we can continue to rely on him. And that starts in the off season, mm -hmm. that process. And it's a sign of maturity that you are taking that off season serious because those things show up during the season. I used to always think about when you train in the night and it's dark and no one's around, but it's gonna prove itself when the lights are on on Sunday or Monday or Thursday, whenever we play now. But again, it's extremely important that he has an outstanding offseason this year sure. so he's available to play and dominate because when he plays, he's a dominant player and his oh, team is yeah. better with him. I mean, just his massive size when he comes on the football field, you know, you see those DBs kind of, I don't want to mess with that. No, guy. no. <laughs> no. Pure domination. And yes. it does make you think if the man was available in the oh. entirety of the season, yeah. what could have been? Yeah, so absolutely right. having Trent Brown on the field impacts your offense, no doubt about that. But last right. but not least, you talk about maturity, and this uh -huh. is something that Gus Bradley spoke about with yeah. improving the defense, being the number one priority heading into the offense. 
in your mind, EA, what is your belief in the key to improving the 2021 Raiders defense? Well, again, there's a, there's a lot. Okay. And again, but I think uh, Gus and his staff are the correct staff to get it done. And there's some things that are so important uh, for a Gus Bradley defense is the discipline and there's some non-negotiable things. And that's what jumped off to me from the interview. That means that there's gonna be a red line and if you don't understand these principles, you're not going to play. Mm. He's gonna practice these principles over and over and over again so you can play fast. So if you're playing a cover four and you need to be uh, a yard outside the hash, you better have proven to me in practice that you can be a yard outside the hash because at some point, that position that you're in is gonna be essential and important to getting the ball and getting a takeover or getting off on third down. So all of these things are developing your players to understand the scheme that you're putting in. And it just seems to me that he's gonna progress uh, at the level that this team is ready to progress. Mm -hmm. And he's gonna have to see that in practice. He's had a year of the COVID and all this stuff. Sure, so he's right. gonna understand how to get those things done and maybe a shortened season, a shortened practice season, mm -hmm. if we're still in this spot. But yeah. again, I'm just really loving the fact that he's a developer, he's a teacher, he's you know also a great guy. And the thing you see from him is wanting to implement that discipline, which like you saw from last year, there were some issues of yeah. lack of discipline oh, being that sure. they were young. And you can only imagine how much better that offense is gonna be going up against Gus Bradley. That's All right, right, thank you guys so much for joining us. For EA Gus Bradley, I'm EC. We'll see you next time. Brought to you by Twitch. Watch, discover, join in. Credit One Bank, the official credit card of the Raiders.